Okay, hi everybody. Okay, I'm so, I'm gonna put on different glasses. Hi, sorry my hair looks so crazy. I haven't washed it for a few days. And um, I'm actually gonna put this a little bit further back. Hi everyone. I am really excited for this Instagram Live because I am talking to Mark Hyman. Um, Mark Hyman is a good friend of mine. I got to know him when I did a documentary called Fed Up. A uh, few, gosh, now probably six years ago, about how sugar is in all the food we eat. And so he is going to put us all, everybody, hi, Kentucky. Um, he's going to really talk to us about how to get healthy. And I don't know about you all, but um, I have been sort of, I fell off the wagon a little bit uh, during the pandemic. And that's it. Mark has written a new book, and so I thought it would be fun. Hi, Mark. Hi, Katie. How's it going? Dude, you look so, uh, I don't know, you look so chill. A, a little Mowified. It's called Mowified because I'm on You're Maui. Mowified. <laughs> Mowified. Yes. I, I like the beard. That's a good book for Yeah. You. Thank you. Yeah, you know, some people hate it. Some people like it. It's very funny. <laughs> I, I, I'm super excited. Adrian, do you mind closing that door? I'm super excited to be doing this with you. Only because, A, I think you're, I, I, I love you, and I think you're- <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> so the fact that we can help a lot of people get into shape, and I love the title of your book. So here's the deal, everybody. I was explaining that we're friends because you were in um, Fed Up that I did a number of years ago, and we've stayed in touch, and I'm a big fan because you are a legitimate doctor, and I love- um, you're, you're obviously at the Cleveland Clinic. What is your title at the Cleveland Clinic, Mark? Uh, I was the director of the Center for Functional Medicine. I'm the head of strategy and innovation. So coming up with new ideas and doing cool stuff and helping really solve big problems with chronic disease and metabolic poor health, which is sort of what we're all talking about now. Absolutely. With COVID. And, and uh, such an important topic. And I know that you have been focused on it for many years. And I love, so, okay, here's the deal, everybody. Let me just put it plain and simple. Mark has a new book out, but he's written a number of books. They're all excellent. But Fine. one is called The Peak Diet. We both have, <laughs> and that's because you were on a panel and you were moderating a conversation between <laughs> advocating a paleo diet and someone who was advocating a vegan diet. And you basically said, I'm vegan. Right. It was, uh, they were just fighting. And I just like, these are these crazy diet wars and all these opposing camps and everybody's fighting with each other. And I realized that they have far more in common, approaches that are trying to improve our health, have more in common with each other than with the traditional American diet or what we call the SAD diet, the standard American diet, which is 60% ultra processed foods comes from three crops, corn, wheat, and soy turned in all size, shapes, and colors of extruded food-like substances that actually are horrible for our health and are killing 11 million people a year around the world and are accelerating our deaths from COVID dramatically in this country because we know that with COVID, it, it disproportionately affects those who are overweight, not even obese, but even just overweight and the obese have more risk and those with chronic disease caused by the food we're eating have the worst risk of death and dying. So we were really in this, in this moment where you know, it's kind of a do or die situation around our diet and our health. And, and it's not a time to uh, just indulge and uh, put on the quarantine 15 or the COVID-19. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. Mark, because it's been very stressful. So people who are stress eaters have more stress and are responding by eating more. I think also we miss the things that we're doing. And I hate to say it, but, you know, Eating can be really pleasurable. And she, yeah. I have a sweet tooth. I have way too many sweets. And I just want to reset. And I want to, I want to feel better. I want to have more energy. And I want all the people who follow me or whoever's interested in kind of doing a reset and getting back on track to do it with us. Because I think yeah. it's fun to do it as a community. And I love the, the subtitle of the book, which is, 21 Practical Principles for, for Reclaiming Your Health in a Nutritionally Confusing World. <laughs> I think, you know, I've done weight watchers, and weight watch works great for some people. I've done, you know, back in the day, the Scarsdale diet. I, 
And, and I always kind of run into the same cycle of I don't eat enough. I get really hungry. I make bad choices. I say I blew it. I eat a that's <laughs> not down and I start the next day. And it kind of like this endless cycle. And I don't know if anybody who's watching <laughs> has, you know, have some food and had, had an eating disorder when I was younger. Thank goodness I don't anymore. But I do have kind of a screwed up relationship with food, like so many, honestly, people and of course, so many women. So I think that that what the reason why I was really excited to do this is because you're a scientist. And what you say is backed by science. And I think you're also going to help me and every, anybody else who wants to do it kind of rethink their relationship with food. Absolutely. Okay. And, and so, so let's talk about, um, let me give everyone kind of what we're doing here. Yeah. So we're talking to Mark today uh, just for about, and a half hour with kind of the basics of what this book is. The book comes out tomorrow. It's called The Pegan Diet, everybody. Sorry, it's backwards in the Instagram. <laughs> and, we gotta uh, fix that. Yeah, we're going to have a wake up call. If you guys don't get my morning newsletter, please do, because first of all, it's excellent. Second of all, it helps me employ a lot of people, uh, journalists who are excellent and smart, and we want to keep them employed. So we have to keep growing. So go to katiecurric.com for all the information about where you can order Mark's book, or you can go to Amazon, obviously. But of course, I'd like you to read my newsletter. And yes, our, it's a good one. I get our, it every morning. I get it every morning. I love it. We're kidding. But anyway, so um, we're going to talk about this today. And on March 1st, everybody, we're going to do Mark's 21-day detox. Now, Mark, Please explain what a detox is, because I think a lot of people think it means something that you don't want it to be. So tell yeah, us. Yeah. Well, you know, people think of detox, they think of, you know, drug and rehab and alcohol and detox. Or about <laughs> not eating anything or doing. Or, yeah, or, yeah or just having green juices and coffee enemas. <laughs> I'm not talking yeah. about that. <laughs> I, think, I think what most people don't realize and don't connect is how they feel with what they eat. So people may feel tired. They might not sleep well. They might have migraines. They might have irritable bowel. They might have joint pain. They might have skin issues. They might just be tired. They might be gaining weight. And they don't really connect the dots between what they eat and how they feel. So the whole purpose of a reset, think about it like a reset. I mean, detox is just sort of a commonly used word, but essentially it's like a reset. How do you reset your biology to its original factory settings? Because Katie, you were talking about how, you know, you get the vicious cycle where you eat the sweets and you crave more sweets and you can't stop. And it's like a whole thing. And it's not because you have some moral failure or you're a weak person or you have some type of uh, eating disorder. It's because your biology has been hijacked by the wrong foods and has not been healed by the right foods. And, and the key principle of, of the Pegan diet and the functional medicine is that food is medicine not like medicine, actually is medicine, and it regulates all your biology. So it regulates your hormones, it regulates your hunger, your sleep, your microbiome, your immune system, your, your, your detoxification systems. Everything is controlled by the food you eat. So if you upgrade the quality of your diet for just a short period of time, you know, a couple of weeks, you'll see profound changes. If you take out the crap and put in the good stuff, your body can literally go back to its original factory settings. You know, how would that be? And a lot of us have, you know, bugs in our software that are causing us to behave in ways that we attribute to psychological or emotional issues or to body image issues. And some of that may be true. And there may be those things for people. But I, I often say you don't know what's true until you hit the reset button. So that's why we're doing this with you is just to give people a chance to experience together with us how differently they can feel in a really short time. And, and I, I just want to use this example because people don't get how powerful food is. You know, we, we talk about poor metabolic health being a risk factor for COVID and 88% of us are in poor metabolic health. That's nine out of 10 of us, which is crazy. How could that be? It's because well, 75% overweight and then about a, a quarter of the skinny people also are what we call skinny fat. So they look skinny, but inside they're fat because they eat crap and their metabolism is the same as that of an overweight person. So it's crazy. And so we, we have this poor metabolic health and it drives our behavior. And when we, when we hit the reset button, we can literally change all the settings and allow our, our biology to work better and to actually self-regulate in a more 
authentic way that's based on what we do. So like animals have an inherent nutritional wisdom. You know, they'll eat what they need to eat. They'll eat the right plants and they'll forage for the right stuff. And they, well, we've lost our nutritional wisdom because we just are addicted to a lot of biologically addictive foods that are uh, sugar for, for, is the number one flour is pretty right up there with sugar. And then there's all the chemicals in food that make us addictive, like MSG and other things are in processed food. So we get in this vicious cycle. And the beauty of this reset is that we get to see, you know, what really is our baseline and how we feel. And most people say, Dr. Hyman, I didn't know I was feeling so bad until I started feeling so good. And so that's really what I wish for people is just to connect the dots. And then you can go back to eating your sheet cake if you want, but at least you know, <laughs> if you do this, well, for, <laughs> you won't, you won't though. People won't because they go, I, I feel great. I don't have migraines. My joints don't hurt. My nose isn't running. My irritable bowel is gone. I feel more energy. I'm not depressed. I mean, it's pretty amazing how powerful food and mood and connection is, is really, is really true. And you're right. I mean, and also diseases in general. And the book is great because I, I just want to read everyone the chapters because I'm like, yes, yes, yes. When I read the chapters, uh, use your food as your pharmacy and you spell pharmacy with an F. In other words, it's all about fresh produce, everybody and getting healthy food. Eat the rainbow, which we've heard. Follow the 75% rule. Eat the right beans, whole grains, nuts, and seeds. Eat your meat as medicine. Now, I am a meat eater, and I think you can be a smart meat eater by not making it the star of the, of the plate. Yeah. But you, know, you say be picky about poultry, eggs, and fish. Have fats with every meal because, as we now know, fats satiate you in a way that really stave off hunger. And That's I think right. part of your philosophy, Mark, isn't it that you kind of, you kind of keep your, your blood sugar stable throughout the day. Yes. You don't, as I do, make bad choices. That's right. And get kind of irrational about yeah. what you put in your mouth, right? Uh, absolutely. And there's some really cool new continuous glucose monitors where you can check your blood sugar 24 seven. And it, it's a shocking uh, experience for people because they don't realize that, oh, I ate this and look at my sugar shot up. And, and you can get them from like uh, Freestyle Libre, which Abbott makes. There's a company called Levels that does this. But there's a really interesting trend that's going to be happening where, where for the average person, it's going to be relatively inexpensive and cheap to measure your sugar. And you don't do it forever like a diabetic, but you can see how the impact of this has. And, and, and I think what I was going to say before about the changes in metabolic health that need to happen now because of COVID is it happens quickly. So if you take a diabetic who's over obese, who's about, who gets gastric bypass surgery, you know, they get their stomach stapled and their diabetes goes away in a week or two. They're still overweight, but they changed the food they ate. Now it was the theory that that was because you changed the hormones, you stapled the stomach, the surgery did something. So, but no one had looked at actually what happens when you compare people who got a gastric bypass who are obese with those who didn't get a bypass, but ate the same diet that they would prescribe to someone who had a bypass. And what they found, there was no difference. It was the food. It wasn't the surgery. And, and it happens like that. And, you know, we've had patients get off insulin in three days for, for type 2 diabetes because they changed their diet. And that's really what, what I want people to experience. Because we could talk all day long. They could listen to you. They could listen to me. They could read my book. I don't care about that. I, I just want people to have the experience of what it feels like in a very short time to reset their biology and feel what it feels like to be themselves. So let's talk about the basics, because as I said, everybody, we're going to do this on March 1st. And by the way, I totally appreciate someone said, don't drink out of single use plastic bottles. This is very unusual for me. I was playing tennis this morning. I didn't bring my water bottle. They had some of these in a cooler and I actually took it, but I don't usually drink single use oh, plastic bottles. <laughs> for calling me out and um, it's an anomaly but thank you for mentioning it so let's talk about the basics because as I said I'm gonna maybe what we also uh, put in wake up call the grocery list yeah that people need to buy they don't have to be fancy or expensive we we need to make that very clear in fact mm -hmm. remember in fed up we talked about the price of a fast food meal versus like a cook at home healthy meal and yeah. the home healthy meal was was much less expensive but anyway yeah. to a grocery list 
But why don't, for these purposes today, and for everybody who's going to be joining me, um, why don't we talk about sort of the very basic principles of what this 21-day program is going to be like, and a program that I hope I can adhere to for life, because I want to yeah. I want to be healthy and I want to live long. And by the way, I'm getting such a gut, Mark. What the? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know because of my age, but. No, it's not. I'm 61 and I have like, don't want to embarrass you, but I have like 6% body fat. It's possible. Even for women, I've seen it. But... Okay. <laughs> I, have a, I have serious belly fat that I'm yeah. <laughs> I, I throwing myself at. When I sit in a chair, sometimes I look down and I look like I'm six months pregnant. It's I, uh, <laughs> but right. we can fix so, that. It'll be fixed in three weeks. <laughs> ladies out there are feeling me when I say that. So, um, so let's talk about kind of the basic principles of this. I'm going to call it a reset because yeah. I don't like the idea of calling it a detox. Right. I agree. I agree. That's what we call the 10 day reset, but we can do it for 10 days, two weeks. And here's the deal with the vegan diet. It's, it's not, it's not exclusive, it's not restrictive, it's inclusive of, of all aspects of food that meet many dietary, cultural, religious preferences uh, and philosophical approaches. But the principle that's really important is quality, is that food is information, it's medicine. So whatever you're eating, make sure it's the best quality that you can get that will regulate your biology in the right way, as opposed to, for example, uh, let's say you're eating, just one example, let's say dairy, we talk about the book. So I'm, I think some people are against dairy or not. I think the question is what dairy and not all foods the same. So if you have a, a cow that's one of these hybridized Holstein cows that's bred for high milk production, this pump full of growth hormone and antibiotics that's fed all kinds of unnatural diets that change the quality of the milk and the, and, and, and the properties of it, is that the same as eating a, an, a, a sheep or a goat that's foraging on wild plants that's changing the quality of their milk and has a different form of casein, which doesn't cause inflammation. Very different. For example, goats feeding on certain shrubs can have high levels of phytochemicals in their milk, just like green tea. So it's like the powerful benefits of green tea you can get from eating goat milk that's fed certain shrubs. And it's a different form of casein, which doesn't cause gut issues and inflammation and all these other issues that regular milk does. So it's still milk, but like what milk, what meat, what nuts, what seeds, what grains, what greens, right? If you're eating white flour, you know, that is pretty harmful, right? Because that is basically like sugar. And especially in America, people say, oh, I go to Europe and I eat pasta, I'm fine. Well, it's true because they use a different form of wheat, different genetic strain, doesn't have the same gluten proteins, doesn't have the same starch level. It has potentially other phytochemicals in it. So it's, it's a more, more well tolerated. But if you're eating white flour here, you're eating dwarf wheat, it's super starchy. It's worse than sugar. It has more gluten proteins that cause all kinds of inflammation. It's preserved with calcium propionate that causes autistic behavior in animals and behavioral issues in kids. And it has glyphosate because they spray it at the end of harvest to dry it out. And that glyphosate can harm our microbiome and cause all this stuff. So that's, that's the one kind of flower. Hard, everyone. Mark knows but, hey, all this. But, <laughs> but, then, but, then, but then, you have like, then you have this other flower that I, I read about in the book. It's called Himalayan tartary buckwheat, which is this incredible grain that comes from the Himalayas. It's grown in rough conditions, and that makes the plant really robust and has 132 phytochemicals that rejuvenate your immune system, that don't raise your blood sugar, that have higher levels of protein and more nutrient density, and you can make pancakes out of it. So you make pancakes out of white flour, you make pancakes out of this buckwheat flour, totally different for your body. So that's the fundamental principle is quality and food is medicine. But I think you might be scaring some people off with like <laughs> eat flowers, and I want everyone to know that this program is accessible and that, yes, there are some really cool products that we can talk about and look into, but, you know, you can really do this yeah. by you know, going to your neighborhood. And, um, so I don't want it to feel too. No, 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 no. I was just giving an example of like what, what right. so, the, so the focus is, is, is you cut out the bad stuff, you put in the good stuff, right? So it, it, the, the, the pink and that in general is very inclusive. You can have all kinds of things, grains, beans, dairy, everything. But when you're doing the 10 day reset, you really want to get rid of all the potential inflammatory things. You want to get rid of all the crap. So it's more of a shorter, shorter term reset. I thought, and it, the, I thought the reset was 21 days. Yeah, 21 days. You can do 21 days, 10 days, whatever, whatever you want. And I want 21 is good. 21 is good. Cause that's how long it takes to break habits. To do 21 too. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Um, so, so you can eat, 
uh, really almost any vegetable that's not a starchy vegetable. Yeah, like that's right. Potatoes, butternut squash, like all these different vegetables. And you can eat a lot. I think you say something like nine to 12 cups a day. Yeah, right? you can eat as much as you want. <laughs> it's unlimited refills. And, and, then, I, and I typically have like three or four side dishes of vegetables. I'm going to be roasting mushrooms, have a, uh, you know, stir fried broccolini, or I might have uh, you know, a salad on top of that with avocados and tomatoes and cucumbers. So I have a lot of different, and you want variety. So that's really key. Your plate should be 75% non-starchy veggies. And then protein is really great. And if you want plant proteins, you can use things like tofu and tempeh if you tolerate those, which are higher in protein, less in starch. Or you can use grass-fed meats or small, like small fish. If you, if you don't have a lot of money, you can use small canned fish. You can get like sardines or herring or mackerel. They're very cheap and extremely nutritious. They're superfoods. Uh, and then of course, you know, you can have some berries and fruit uh, and a low sugar fruit, but not a ton of fruit, just a moderate amount of fruit, and lots of nuts and seeds. Like, okay, so so I, I'm going to have you go through a, a day of uh, what what you might recommend we start eating. And again, maybe we can even do some menus and stuff. You have some of those in your... Yeah, absolutely. But um, so everybody, because I've been reading the book, so you should really for this reset stay away from fruits like bananas apples these very high sugar fruits strictly or, or stick with primarily blueberries strawberries berries of all kinds yeah any kind of blackberries yeah and kiwis are fine some some fruits are fine and i would say that the, the key point here is that um if you if you're focusing on your diet it's just it's really simple it doesn't have to be complicated or difficult so for breakfast for example you can make pasture-raised eggs, you can cut up an avocado, slice up some tomatoes, throw some olive oil, salt and pepper on there. Super easy. And you can make the hard-boiled eggs the night before, and it literally takes five minutes. For lunch, you can, and you want to eat fat, because the key to keeping your cravings down and hunger down is fat. So I make up what I call a fat salad. So I put like the arugula, and I have the pre-washed stuff because I'm lazy. I'll throw in some cherry tomatoes, so I don't have to cut anything. I'll take an avocado, scoop it out. I'll throw in some pumpkin seeds, which are full of zinc, which is great for COVID. Also lots of good fats in there. I'll maybe throw some olives in there and then I'll, I'll put olive oil, olive oil in there. And if I want, I'm hungry. I might put a, uh, I open a can of, uh, of mackerel or sardines or herring or a can of wild salmon and have it along with that. And that's, and, and that's got omega three fats. So you're having all these different fats, but lots of vegetables and it's all so yummy and it's delicious and it's easy to make it probably could whip it together in 10 minutes. And then dinner, is like, uh, you know, I just make it really simple. You can have put a little fish and, and pan fry it, roast in the oven or chicken breast or, you know, have grass fed steak if you want. Uh, you can make some stir fried veggies that take really just a few minutes, chop up some veggies, a little garlic, ginger. I don't make complicated recipes most of the time. And I like to roast mushrooms. That's my new favorite thing is roasting mushrooms just from the oven or a toaster oven and they're done. So very simple cooking, very delicious, using olive oil, salt, pepper, spices, uh, and, and if you want a snack, you have nuts and seeds or. And so what about grains? Are, are we supposed to stay away from grains? And of course, my coffee, but, but tell me about grains, dairy, caffeine, and I know sugar. This is yeah. going to be hard for me because I think I have a sugar problem, Mark. Yeah, yeah, you, you won't in a few days. You'll notice in three days, and we can talk about this next time. But I had a woman come to a workshop I did, and she's like, Dr. Ryman, there's no way I can get up sugar. I'm doing this program, which is clean diet, but I'm not going to do it. I've been addicted to sugar for decades, and there's no way. By day two, she's like, I have no cravings. I feel good. So if you eat this way, what happens very quickly, you change your hormones. You Quickly, you change your brain chemistry. And so all of a sudden, you're not in the same vicious cycle that you were and you it's like surprising like why aren't why do i feel full why am i why am i you know not hungry right why why is everything easy and and what about so let me ask you about okay so sugar let's just get off sugar everybody we'll do it together what about what about grains mark grains are okay but i what i would say for initial for initial detox what i have people do is just get off of all the potentially problematic foods because some people have digestive issues and they can't really tolerate a lot of grains and beans. Some people have digestive issues or allergies. They can't tolerate dairy. So essentially what I do is try to give people uh, a, a diet that eliminates all the potential problematic foods. And it's mostly grains, beans, and dairy for, for most people. And then add them back after the 21 days. See how you feel. 
you know, I had a little boy who uh, was just really struggling with all these recurrent infections and cough and fatigue and headaches and struggling. And we cleaned up his diet. We got him off of corn, dairy, I think gluten, which were his big trigger foods. And all of a sudden, went away. And then over the holidays, he cheated and he got sick right again. So when you go back to eat it, you go, oh, I know what's going on. But it, like the thing is, Katie, if, you're, if you have a horse standing on your foot all the time, then you don't know what it feels like to have the horse off your foot until he gets off. <laughs> like if all of a sudden, geez, I, I didn't know that my da 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 was caused by what I was eating. Then you eat it and you get a migraine or you eat it and your joints start to hurt or you eat it and your nose starts to run or you eat it and you get irritable bowel syndrome and have diarrhea. Well, then, you know, it probably your body doesn't like it. And then you can stay off it longer term. Let me ask you about, and then if you have a little more time, Mark, I know you have to go, but we have a lot of people asking questions or we can do another one. We can do another one anytime. I got okay. Deepak Chopra right after you. Oh. <laughs> okay, so so coffee and dairy. And can okay. I have a cup of coffee in the morning, please? Oh, please. Yes, yes. And so co I co yes, coffee is not the worst thing to me. Yeah, so coffee is the biggest source of antioxidants in the American diet, but that's not a good thing. It's because the American diet is just so crappy. There's so many options. Yeah. But, it, but it, some people tolerate it fine. It can affect people's sleep. It can make people anxious. It can make them irritable. It raises cortisol. So there, there, are, there are challenges with it for some people. But most people do okay with it. Uh, and that's why I say, if you want to really clean the slate, no alcohol, no coffee. But if you really want a cup of coffee, that's okay. Fine. Yeah, dairy, dairy, you know, you can have a non-dairy milk in it if you want as a creamer. I would not do dairy for most people because, again, it's one of those common problems that causes post nasal drip, allergies, digestive, skin issues, eczema, acne. I wonder, Mark, if the dairy is, is exacerbating my eczema. I know this is like... T 100%. I've been 100%. getting eczema on my eyelids, and it's so weird. And I did one of those allergy tests, and I'm mm. allergic some of the chemicals in in some of these like shampoos and stuff but i also wonder if some of the food i'm eating is is inflammatory yeah, yeah for sure katie the most common in my practice in functional medicine reason for people with eczema or psoriasis is gluten and dairy and sugar uh and that often uh, affects the, the microbiome which creates bad bugs in your gut and it causes inflammation and leaky gut. So you're going to feel so good, Katie. Your eggs are going to go away. Your belly fat's going to go away. You're going to have tons of energy. You're going to make a new movie. <laughs> Listen, all, you had me at leaky gut, Mark. <laughs> so listen, <laughs> here's the drill. This is, if you're just tuning in, this is my good friend, Mark Hyman. We're going to do a 21 day reset. It's called spring into health because it's really about feeling good. You are probably going to lose weight, but this is not the ultimate goal. It really to feel better. And I'm going to lose my belly fat. If you have belly fat, then you might want to lose yours too. And then we're going to be checking in with Mark periodically. His book is called uh, the Pegan diet. Um, where did I put? Oh, here it is. The Pegan diet. Um, it comes out tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, subscribe to our newsletter. I want to hear how you all are doing. And um, yeah. what, why don't we do this again, Mark, because I got so many good questions. Yeah, yeah, we can do it later um, this week. For you sure. know, one of the things that I know you believe in is you've got to eat a good breakfast. And, you know, and I want to talk to you about intermittent fasting and all this stuff to get the best scientific and medically validated information to people so they can feel better and uh you know just be healthier yeah and that's the whole point of the book is just take take the science make it really simple get the noise out of all the conversations get the confusion out of it and let people try to eat a way that's going to support their health to regenerate their own health and by the way the way i'm talking about it will help regenerate the planet too because it helps climate change and everything else that's wrong with the world right. well listen there's there so i'm excited to to do this as a community with, with the people who follow me and we'll be in touch. You guys sign up for the newsletter. We'll do another Instagram live. Maybe uh, we'll do it the day before March 1st. So yeah. we can get everybody ready to go. I'll put out a grocery list of things that you should buy, buy my Mark's book. And um, in the meantime, tell, Oh, what okay. sign up for wake up call. I said that. We're going to get to your questions, you guys. I'm sorry we couldn't get them to, to them today, but let's do it maybe on uh, February. How many days in February this year? It's 28. 
28th. We'll do it on February 28th and um, so to get us all psyched to do the reset on March 1st. And Mark, thank you for doing this with everybody. Mark's very expensive, you guys. So this is a <laughs> that we get the free. But, you know, for, for, for $17, you can, you know, get the whole thing. You don't need yeah. me. It's cheap. <laughs> Sorry, I look so scary. But tell Deepak I said hi. I will. I will. <laughs> Everybody, let's get with this program. I'm super excited to do it with all of you. Bye, Mark. Bye. I'll see you soon. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.